ladies, welcome back to the channel Daughter of Increase. My name is Nadine East for those of you who are new to the channel. And I post new videos every Tuesday and Thursday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. Today's video is going to be a long-awaited one that many of you guys have been waiting on for the past year for me to do. And it's going to be my part one review of the Thompson Chain Reference Bible. This has been a Bible I wanted to review for a year, but it's just so extensive that it's it's hard to really review it, um, just because there are so many parts. But I decided to do the review for you guys in multiple parts. So this first part is just me showing you exactly what is in this Bible, exactly the sections that they have, and just a quick brief um, how to mini how to on how to utilize the. Um, pilot numbers in here and you'll understand pilot numbers when we get into the video but um yeah there will be a second video showing you guys how I utilize this Bible um, I showed you guys the pilot numbers in this video and I also showed you how I use it when you watch the clip um but there will be an actual like I guess how to tutorial in a sense of me utilizing this because this Bible is so good I recommend it to everyone everyone before you even get a study Bible Get this Bible because it's a study Bible but not in a sense of having like the study notes it's a study Bible in a sense that um, scripture proves scripture and it gives you key notes to the verses to help you understand and be able to explain it without someone else's um, thoughts on the scripture and all the resources in the back of this Bible are just amazing there are eight departments of this Bible is what they call it I don't know why they call it eight departments um, but yeah this this is a massive Bible this does come in different kind of um, bindings there's a hardcover there's leather bindings there's different translations I think the NKJV as well as the NIV I think it is it'll be on the screen exactly the translations because I can never remember but I have the KJV um, translations because I feel like that's the best one to get um, I think everyone should always own an N I mean a KJV but uh Yes, finally doing this review for you ladies. All the links to get this I will be down below. I got mine off of Amazon because when it wasn't expensive, but I also have links to it on, um, I believe, ChristianBook.com. Great Bible, highly recommend it. But if you want to see the inside of this Bible um, in my review, which is massively long, keep watching. All right, I am back and I'm finally. <laughs> doing this review and this is going to have to be like a two-part video um this is just going to be me showing you the bible not how to utilize it because that's a whole separate video that needs to be done um but this is like i said in the intro finally going to be a review on the thompson chain reference bible this is from kirk bride if i'm not mistaken yes and this is in the kjv i believe it comes in the new king james as well as the I don't know if it's the NIV or the NLT. Just it'll be on the screen, written which one it is. Um, I got mine. Oh, did I get it off of Amazon? I think I got mine off of Amazon, but you can get it off of ChristianBook.com. So I will leave link down, links down below for both where you can get it from. I do have the paperback just because I like the floppiness of it. You can get this in I believe hardcover as well as a leather bound. Um, this edition I don't even know which one this is, but as we get into the Bible, you'll see. So I got this Bible in 2017. You guys can see I already had a tape up here because I've been using it. I haven't used it as faithfully, but um, the first few pages are like blank pages. And you get your title page, which, yeah, we're going to straighten that out. My my Bible's a little beat up. Just just a little bit. This is the fifth improved edition. So this is the fifth edition of this Bible. Um, and it's the Thompson's Original and Complete System of Bible Study, including... Complete numerical system chain reference, analysis of books, outline studies of characters and unique charts, and a ton of other things. So we're going to get into that. So here it is again. This Bible originally came out in 1908 by Frank Charles Thompson, and it's been coming out since then in different editions. Again, this is the fifth edition, and over 4 million copies of this have been sold. Again, taped it up because, you know, my Bible speed up. <laughs> So you get your contents uh, with your basic kind of information there, books of the Old Testament, books of the New Testament. Your con comprehensive Bible helps, which they give you at the beginning of the Bible, which I think is great. And those are going to be like the supplemental things that are in the back of the Bible. But um, before I even get into that, I just want to show you guys exactly 
how much is the Bible and how much are the Bible helps because I think that's something everyone needs to see so all of this is the Bible and all of this is the study help portion but we'll dive in so first thing you see is a preface to the Thompson chain reference Bible um, you get the analytical and synthetic system of Bible study so I like that they tell you how to use this Bible and how to do different methods of studying which off the back, I'm going to tell you guys, this is an essential Bible. If you don't own this Bible, buy it. Off the back. Ugh. These pages. Okay. I will say the pages are really thin. As you can see, there is fading. Not fading, but, um... Oh my god, what is the word? It's not show through, but you guys know what I'm saying. <laughs> not bleed through, but, um... I can't think of the word right now. So, yeah, here's the synthetic method here. Then you have, um, the condensed encyclopedia of topic text, the great themes, contrasted archaeology... Then you have the explanation of the margins, um, the text encyclopedia, and the journey maps, which basically kind of gives you like a quick, brief overview of how to work through this Bible. Then you get your practical advantages of the Bible, your key to the pronunciation of proper names. And in this, I like that they show you how to do book studies, chapter studies, and passage or verse studies. So... This Bible, like I said, is essential. I'm going to keep saying it. Um, and these pages. So, here is the beginning of the Old Testament. Um, and the image for that looks like this. So, you have the Old Testament flowing into the New Testament flowing. Well, it's kind of like this way and then that way. Like a river, if that makes sense. Um, but here is the first book in the Bible. And let me zoom in just a bit so you have four columns in this Bible um, two columns of text and then two columns of your cross references and your pilot numbers is what they call them um, at the top you get what the book is so the first book of Moses, Moses called Genesis and yeah the text is pretty uh, I mean it's not tiny to me but it can be tiny to some of you um, and then you have a bunch of numbers. And I'm going to show you guys about the numbers shortly. But I just want to show you guys the Bible itself. Then show you guys how I use the Bible. And then show you guys the supplements. Like I said, this is going to be probably a long video. Because there's so much to this Bible. But, um, yeah, so you have that. And I'm going to skip these two tabs quickly. Because I'm going to show you those later. So I'm going to skip ahead. I don't even know what this is that I marked, honestly. To the New Testament. <laughs> um, so here we have the New Testament. Let me take this out. So the marginal chain reference New Testament containing improved numerical system of the chain references together with verse and chapter analysis and um, other practical help. So there's definitely a split between the Old Testament and the New Testament. And just kind of like the um, Old Testament where you had that river, you have the Old Testament and New Testament um you know, the prophecies or the things that happened in the Old Testament and how Christ came in and changed it in the New Testament, which I think is great. Um, so it's the contrast between the Old and the New Testament. There you go. And then you get into the text, which is the same setup. Four columns, um, two columns of text, two columns of like your references and things like that. The difference with this is that they started to give each kind of section different paragraph names that were bolded. and okay so i'm going to get to the back in a second so what i'm going to do is i'm going to zoom in so you guys can see this closer so here we are zoomed in close and you guys can see that on the side um i hate matthew not that i hate matthew but i just i dislike matthew for some reason so let's skip ahead to luke okay so here we have the parable of the Pharisees and the publican. So you have your title for that section. Then you have these numbers here, which are kind of like pilot numbers, they call them. You have a few words, which these words to me are really significant when I can't personally think of something as I'm studying in another Bible. This is one Bible that I'm always, I always have out when I'm studying. But what I do is I read the verses that I'm reading on my own and I take my personal notes. And when I get stumped, 
um, before I even touch another study Bible, I come to this chain reference Bible and I look at the little words because the little words are really all that you need to really understand the verses. And I mean, this verse 9 here has this section. So it's already telling me about his parable and self-confidence and self-righteousness. So here we are. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. So there we're talking about that self-righteousness righteousness and self-confidence. And then, as you can see, it has a one next to it. Um, and that refers back to the pilot number. And then you have a cross-reference here, which is 1 Corinthians um, 10 and 12. Well, this I wouldn't even consider this as a cross-reference. They don't call it a cross-reference. What they call it is a chain reference. And what it is, is if you go to 1 Corinthians 10 and 12, keep in mind, the number here is 3188, self-confidence 1, 1 Corinthians 10 and 12. I know I said I wasn't going to do this in this video, but I feel like I have to so you guys can really understand this Bible. Alright, so I'm almost at 10 and 12. So that's Seven. Okay, so here's First Corinthians ten, and we need to go to verse twelve, which is here, right? So First Corinthians ten and twelve. Wherefore let them, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed at least he fall. Again, remember that number, right? Thirty one eighty eight self confidence. If you go to ten and twelve and you look on that side, it has the same thing. Thirty one eighty eight self-confidence so the chain is basically just scripture proving itself scripture connecting scripture to prove that the scripture itself is true if that just made any sense um this is it sounds awkward but as you begin to use the bible and flow with it it, it becomes such an easy process i love using this to obviously chain reference and um connect verses to other verses and I also like using this to get cross-references. And when I mean cross-references, let me see if I can find one. Okay, so over here, um, Luke 18. I'm sorry, this is Luke 17, verse 18. There are not found that return to give glory to God, save the stranger. If you move over, you see PP Matthew 9 and 22 parallel passage i believe that's what it said it stands for as parallel passage but um let's just go to it 9 and 22 so this is chapter 9 let's go to verse 22 Yeah, so it, it, it basically brings you to Matthews 9 and 22. It says, but Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, daughter of, I'm sorry, daughter, be of God, comfort thy faith, hath made thee whole. I'm so sorry, you guys, my brain. Trying to look at it from up here and then looking at it on the screen is ridiculous. But yeah, so it kind of like brings you to that passage um because there says there are not found that return to give glory to god save this stranger um arise go thy way thy faith hath made thee whole so 18 and 19 goes back to matthews 9 um and 22 so that's how that works okay so now with these pilot numbers i'm going to jump to those and um we're going to go to the back of the bible so i just showed you guys basically how the bible is so again let me zoom out a bit. Just a bit. Okay. Hopefully this is close enough that you can see, but not far enough that you're not going to be able to see. So like I said, you get two columns of your scriptural text, and then two columns here of your references, chain references, and whatnot, um, and your pilot numbers. So at the end of the Bible, you have this, which it says, the Thompson Comprehensive Bible's Help. Bible helps containing a complete system of biblical studies in eight departments. So... These are your eight departments. You have the text cyclopedia, your Bible readings, your outline of the outline studies of the Bible, studies of prominent Bible characters, Bible harmonies and illustrated studies, archaeological supplements, concordance, and colored Bible atlas. Whew, that was a lot. But yeah, there is a lot in the back, um, which is why the text is a little small. But again, you have your principles of Bible study here. 
your best methods, which are topical biographical studies of the book, studies of chapters and important passages, and memorize great verses. Then you get a list, again, that comprehensive Bible help that was at the beginning. You get it again in the back, which I like that they do that twice, so you don't have to go flipping to the front of the Bible. All right, so here we have the general index. Um... And I mean, that's pretty much, it's just an index of a bunch of people and words and things like that. If you're looking for a specific thing to go to so that you can go into the back into the, uh, I don't even know what they call it, but the cyclopedia is what they call it. So the index is just, um, alphabetical order of different names, places, and words that will give you a number right here, as you can see, to go to the cyclopedia, which is here. So this is a condensed cyclopedia of topics and texts. And that's what these pilot numbers are for. So, um, hindrance, as you guys can see here, this is for Luke, uh, what chapter is this? 18, verse 25. It reads, For it is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And to the side of it, it says, Hindrance to spiritual progress. The pilot number here is 1564. So you would take that 1564 number and go to the back of the cyclopedia. And I need to get something to hold this. So I'm going to be ghetto and use a ruler to hold that page. Um, and again, 1564. So you guys can see these numbers here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 15 and all that. So you would look for the number 1564. And again, at the top, you can see numbers. So 12, 13, 14. All right. We don't want to go too far. So 1576. So 1564 would be here. Hindrances to spiritual progress. Again, 1564. I'm going to go back to that Luke verse. 1564. Hindrances to spiritual progress. So that pilot number and that title will go back and coincide in the cyclopedia, um, which gives you the pilot number, the topic, which is hindrances to spiritual progress progress and then it gives you different things in different ways so worldly um, allurements which you can find in Genesis 19 and 26 the attempt to use equipment of Saul um, which you can see in 1st Samuel discouragement opposed the building unbelief hindered Christ's work and the list goes on so that's how that goes I'm gonna try another one for you guys here we are in Acts. Let's go. Last days. So this is Acts chapter 2 verse 17. It shall come to pass in these last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. So, on this side, for this one, I'm sorry, you can't even see that. <laughs> so, for this one verse here, you have all of these notes. All of this is connected. So this is fulfillment of prophecy, which you can also, again, see if you go to, that looks to be Joel. Maybe it is, maybe it's not, but it tells you where you can find the same kind of passage. But last days here is 926, your pilot number. The topic is the last days, and your reference would be, uh, or your chain reference, rather, would be 2 Timothy 3 and 1. You also have spiritual promise. Spirit promise, you have channels of truth, spiritual utterance, spiritual visions, visions and dreams. So you get a lot from this one thing, which is why I like coming to this Bible, because if I don't understand, if I didn't understand this passage on its own um, in my other Bible, if I couldn't really get anything out of it, I would come here and look at these little words and phrases to comprise my understanding before diving into a study Bible. But again, going to last days, 926. So let's go to 926. Um, so we're in the 15, so we're going to go back. We're going to look for 9, 26. We're in the 80s, 40s, okay. We're in the 9s, but 9, 26. Days, the last of time. So the last days of time, and it gives you the various scriptures you can find it at. And again, we was in Acts 2.17, so there's Acts 2.17. So that's how that works, okay? Hopefully that made sense. I Like I said, I'm going to do a more in-depth video of how to use the Bible in its fullness. But that's just a quick sort of usage of it. So, again, this is the Cyclopedia text, okay? So moving on.
to the next kind of thing after the cyclopedia text which is all of this this is the cyclopedia um, of topics and text right here so then you have your outline studies of the Bible so you have the seven editions of divine law which I know nothing about this um, and these illustrations in here gorgeous I don't know who did these but they're just gorgeous you have the historical bridge the origin and growth of the English Bible and more information on that the messianic stars trying to take that off without ripping it <laughs> I don't even know what this is but like just the artwork in here the temple of truth crisis sermon on the mount so yeah this is about the sermon on the mount then you have the old testament condensed outline because they have a condensed one and a full blown so this is just a condensed quick outline of the old testament testament so you get the pentateuch which is five books the historical books which are 12 the poet poetical or wisdom books which would be five books the prophetical books which um are 17 apparently oh no sorry it says prophetical books there are 17 total and it's broken down by the major prophets which there are five major prophets and then you have 12 minor prophets so 12 and 5 is 17 that's how that worked i was so confused for a second like I know I know how many books there are then you have this chart which is the periods of Old Testament history secular history and the interval between the Old and the New Testament then you have the New Testament history here then you have your full-blown outline study and analysis of the books of the Bible so you started off with the condensed outline which you guys can see is not a lot of pages it's like Four pages one two three three and a half pages right and then you go to your full-blown one which I believe this is a lot more pages yeah it's a lot more pages so with this you get um, the author the book origin your main thing your keyword or words the first messianic promise the synopsis of it um, and then you get some prominent names associated with that book you get your spiritual characteristics um, from that book or whatever is important from that book so it goes through all the books of the Bible the primary cause of the Babylonian captivity righteousness sin idolatry righteousness sin idolatry again so There's a lot in this Bible, and this is why it took so long for me to make this, because I didn't know the best way to make it, but I know a lot of you guys are interested in knowing about the Bible. So I figured doing this review in several parts would be best. So this first part is just me walking through, telling you guys, and showing you guys different portions of the Bible. Here's another um, image here. I mean, so like I said, it goes for a couple of pages. This is the end of Revelations revelation then you dive into your character studies um and this is more so of prominent characters of the bible so you have noah abraham so going back let's go i don't even know where you're gonna find it so up here you have the same kind of thing with your pilot numbers and it tells you where you can find the analysis for the book and the keywords trying to see if I can find it for Noah because I, I don't even know when Noah took place but again they would have those pilot numbers as well as you can see Noah is 4289 Noah the ark builder and it tells you information so you have Noah you have Abraham here's an image of the ark you have some maps journeys of Abraham you have Joshua Gideon Samuel Solomon David obviously you need King David and King Solomon Elijah, Elisha, and Daniel. Then you have um, a smaller kind of classification of other prominent men and prominent women of the Bible. So this one is the men, if I'm not mistaken, and this is of the Old Testament and the New Testament. And the other page, I believe, yeah, are women of the Old and the New. Here's an outline history of the Apostles. It's a chart. I'm not even going to turn it sideways. It's a lot portraits of Jesus or Christ rather um, and in John's portraits of Christ 
there's a lot like oh, it's a lot um prophecies concerning Jesus and their fulfillment so the prophecies and the fulfillment of it so Old Testament New Testament fulfillment pretty much and it's done chronologically which I think is phenomenal your Bible harmonies and illustrations so this is the journey of Abraham which is continued from 40 to 90 Here's the tree of Moses and the key to the Moses tree. So all of these numbers on the tree, if you guys can see one, two, three, four, five, um, they correspond with that chart or the key here. Journeys of the children of Israel from Egypt to Canaan, the book of Exodus and Numbers, which is extensive. And I mean, like... You guys can see there are just so many gorgeous images. Mana and quails, wells of water, bitter water made sweet. So I really, really. Oh. Did I mention how much I love this Bible? You guys, like, I love it so much. And my phone is just vibrating and vibrating. Let's put that on mute. Thank you. Um, the journeys and the principal events of the life of Joshua. And I really like how um, detailed these maps are because they're like drawn. Oh my gosh. Trying to turn these pages with dry fingers is not is not good. Um this is Gideon and Samuel. So this one is Gideon, this one is Samuel. Saul. Here's David. Solomon. And I mean obviously you gotta if you have one, you gotta have the other. Then you have the tree of life of Jesus here, which has a whole bunch of numbers. Um, and then the key that goes with understanding the numbers on this. So, yeah. And that's extensive. And I, I'm not even going to sit here and say that I've gone through everything. Because this Bible is just so much information. So much that it's hard. But um, then you have the Harmony of the Gospels. Which I think is great. Then you have the Journeys of Jesus in the Early Life. Which would be Matthew, Luke. Footprints of Jesus in the Year of the Inauguration. This is in the year of popularity. This was in the year of his opposition when he was about 32 years old. So I like that they are giving you his age. So it says Matthew and Luke here. So then the year of inauguration is when he was about 30. Is what that says. And this when his popularity was about 31. And then 32 was when he had the opposition. Because we all know that he died at 33. That's what they say. Um, and the footprints in his last months about the age of 33. Yeah. Again, another one of those. His footprints during the last days. This is the last months. These are the last days. Jesus' hour upon the cross, which I think is so phenomenal. Oh, I love it. The post-resurrection appearances of Jesus. Then the seven churches of Asia. The scenes in the life and ministry of Peter tree of Paul's life with the explanation slash key to his life his early life his first missionary journey the second missionary journey his third missionary journey I mean you guys can see how long this video is there's a lot to this Bible and his voyage to Rome you have an outline um, history of the evangelistic and missionary work in the early church You have approximate distances of various places from Jerusalem. And then you have the prodigal son. Um, which I think is nice that this gives you some information about that. Because the prodigal son is like a well-known prominent parable that people know. Then you have your topical treasury practical helps for young people and Christian workers um, generally. And I think this is another great one. It's kind of like if you're looking for a topic or something to talk about. This is where you would go. The cyclopedia is where you go if you want more information or more scriptures. This is where you go before the cyclopedia. So say you want to talk about, um, okay, so this one is on prayer and devotional meetings. So personal work, you would go to the cyclopedia going to number 3907. You can't see it, but 3907. Um, you have some for young people meetings, men's meetings. 
women and children's meetings, evangelistic meetings, missionary meetings, temperance meetings, special days, and you have the Christian workers' outfits. Some memory verses, so these are verses that they feel like you should remember. So there are 66 verses, um, each verse selected from the 66 books. This goes on the Bible mnemonics, I think that's how you say that. Um, how to mark your Bible with color coding, phenomenal. I haven't read it yet, I need to, but phenomenal. Places for religious worship, and I just, I, uh, everything about this is just amazing. I mean, and this goes on and on. Um, and then we go into your archaeological supplements. And that's basically what it is. Um, archaeology in the back. Different images and photos. Statues. Remnants. The construction of King Sargon's 25-acre palace. I don't even know who that is. But, yep. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and again, all of these are also have a pilot number on them. So everything has a pilot number to reference you to something in this Bible when you are reading the text, the scriptures. So then after that, you get a list of your illustrations. And then, this is a Hebrew calendar here. I'm sorry, guys, this video is past, almost, it's going to be past 30 minutes. Um, and then... This is your glossary. Yes. This is going to be your glossary of Old English, Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek words. So you have Abba here, which they tell you is Aramaic word meaning father and where you can find it at. So if there's a word in here you don't know, um, you can definitely come back here and look it up to see if it's in here. And then you get your traditional um, concordance. And I mean, everyone knows what a concordance is. If you don't, like, if you don't remember a full scripture, but you remember certain words, you can look in a concordance to locate the actual scripture. And it is tiny. <laughs> um, it is very tiny. That font is super tiny. But again, it doesn't bother me, though. I wear glasses. <laughs> so, yes, that's a lot of that. Then you get your scripture atlas at the back. So, you have your archaeological sites, which is in Division 1. Division 2 is your biblical biblical names. And I, I honestly wouldn't even be able to tell you how this works. Because it says 1F2. I, I, I don't know, guys. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. But yeah, I would figure it out somehow and let you guys know when I do part 2. Um, you have your cultural features. Your points of interest, your land features, your water features. Then you just get your maps in the back. So, oh, maybe that's what that means. That would make sense. Yes. Okay. I think I know what that. Yeah, I'll tell you guys in the next video. It's a long video. <laughs> but um, I do like these maps and how nice and um, vibrant they are. But they're not vibrant, vibrant, but they're not dull either. And you do get a lot more maps in this Bible compared to any other type of Bible out there. And then you just have pages for it. notes. It says notes. So, there's a lot to this Bible. Um, th this, this Bible was everything. Um, it, it's, it's a full, complete, like, library for you. I highly, highly like this. One to five, definitely um, a one. You definitely need this. This is a necessity in your life. Um, I meant to say five, not one. <laughs> five being like you need one, meaning you don't really need it. This is a five. So you need this Bible. If you do not own this Bible, I highly suggest. If you're kind of like in the stage of you don't have a study Bible and you want a study Bible, I would tell you to honestly get the Thompson Chain Reference Bible first because it doesn't have the study notes in it but you don't honestly need them as long as you have these key words and mm, it's kind of hard to explain oh, I don't know how to say it but I'm now going to show you guys how I use this bible and I got this idea from my sis Anne over at transform through God's word that is the sister group to daughter of increase and I love my sister to death hey sis if you're watching this but um back when we studied Ruth um I think it was Ruth or Esther I can't remember I think it was Esther uh, 
I'm going to say Ruth. Um, don't kill me if it's wrong. Let me know, sis, which one it was <laughs> when you started using this. But the way she uses is that she was um, inputting her other cross-references to use this as a, a cross-reference Bible. Because this Bible is not going to have every cross-reference out there. It, it's just not. It's going to have the key ones. Um, so what she was doing was inserting her cross-references. And I thought that would be a cool way to use this because that's how I use this Bible anyway. I use it specifically for cross-referencing um, scriptures and to get a better understanding when I don't understand things. So that's what I started doing. I would underline the verses and um, write the cross references and underline them or box them in the same color so that I knew that that would go with this and that one with that. So that's how I did it for um, Ruth. And there wasn't a lot for Ruth. And then also for Esther. Here we have Esther. And I was still getting the hang of it, which is why these two are like separated. But you know. Definitely getting my cross reference game on, as you can see. And again, these there are so many cross references out there to utilize. And as we are studying John, I didn't really start doing it with John, but I did do it for John chapter 5 as I was making my notes. So I do have to go back through the other chapters and insert them, but, you know, definitely was adding in my cross-references when I needed to. These pages are so thin, oh my gosh. So it is kind of hard when you are writing on this just because pages are so thin. Um, and you can, I don't even know if I have it, let me see. Oh, I have this mark because I'm still studying Psalms, you guys. I am still on Psalm 68. I've been on Psalm 68 since, like, oh, who knows. <laughs> but um, let me see if I can find what I'm looking for. Mm, 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 mm. Yes, yeah, so um, here I was using, like, pink pen. And it kind of bled through. So make sure you're using a good quality pen on this. I would say just go with a regular big round stick pen um, or even my favorite, which is the RSVP Pentel pens. Um, they don't bleed through as bad as other pens. But um, yeah, again, I highly suggest this Bible. It's one of my favorites. It's phenomenal. This Bible, uh, it doesn't have a price on this, but I don't think I paid a lot when I bought it off Amazon. And you can definitely get this at a good price. On Christian books. So again, check the description box down below for the links so where you can buy it. I highly suggest this Bible. This is one of the Bibles I tell everyone to buy because I think it is useful whether you are a minister, a church member, whether you stay at home, whether you work, whether you went to theology school or you didn't go to theology school, whether you're a woman or man. Um, I don't care. This is one of those Bibles that I feel like everyone should own. I got my copy because my mom had a copy and I was utilizing her copy so much that I really wanted my own. And she had got her copy from my first lady, um, I think either before she became my mother became an evangelist or after or she was a minister. It was in that realm. So, yeah, kudos to my mother and my first lady. That's how I got my hands on a copy um, and I paid for it myself because this Bible is amazing. I highly recommend it and I'm going to say it again. If you ask me my top three Bibles, this is definitely on my list. Definitely going to be top one because this, I feel like it's so amazing. It, there's so much in this Bible and you'll get so much out of studying it. When I first started doing the Bible journaling style, this was one of the Bibles that I utilized and I got so much out of it, you guys. So that is it for this long winded video. This video is probably going to be 45 minutes once I make an intro and edit and everything. But you guys wanted this video and I've been putting it off. But um this is just part one. Part two, I'm gonna actually do a video showing you how I use it as I study. But um that is it and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.